It's easy to get lost and confused with the thousands of in-game items in Old School RuneScape. There are tons of powerful equipment that every main account should have unlocked in the mid to late game progression. A lot of these items do give your character a passive effect, gaining you more XP in the long run or just saving you time, which is crucial in this game. I compiled a list of 17 items in no specific order that cannot be purchased with in-game gold, but rather through quests, rewards, or diaries. The magic secateurs are obtained during the quest fairy tale part one, Growing Pains. It is most commonly used for the increased yield when farming. When equipped or in the inventory, the magic secateurs increase the base chance of an additional crop beyond the minimum number by 10% for some patches. So this is great for when you're doing those herb and hops patch runs and you're using that for a money maker. I use the magic secateurs in both my tree run farming guide and my herb run farming guide on my channel. The imbued slayer helm functions the same manner as the unimbued variant with the 16.6% melee bonus, except the imbued provides an additional 15% boost to both range accuracy, range damage, and also 15% boost to mage accuracy and mage damage against the monsters assigned to the player's individual slayer task. It costs 400 slayer points to craft it and most commonly can be imbued through Soul Wars or the Nightmare Zone. Borrow's Gloves, if you don't have these, I will make fun of you. You can get these from the Callmancer's chest in the Lumbridge Castle cellar after the completion of the entire Recipe for Disaster quest. Of all the gloves in Old School RuneScape, the Borrow's Gloves provide the second highest offensive bonus for both range, mage, and strength bonuses. Borrow's Gloves are gloves that can be purchased for 130k, but if you have the Elite Lumbr Lumbridge Diary completed like myself, it only costs you 104k. Graceful is weight reducing gear that can be bought from Grace. She's in the Rogue's Den in Birthrub under the pub there. So the pieces are bought from her clothing shop with marks of grace, which can be obtained from rooftop agility courses. Uh, while the individual pieces of the outfit will increase the rate of your run restore energy, wearing the full entire set gives you an additional 10% bonus, giving a total of 30% increase to the natural run energy restoration. So that's huge. Uh, this is the best weight reducing armor in the game. You'll hear that a lot from Slayer Meech's uh, quest guides on YouTube if you watch him. He's always telling you to bring some weight reducing armor. The Fighter Torso is one of the most popular and frequently used armor pieces for melee training in the game. The strength bonus is tied with the Bando's chest plate and the new armor, the Blood Moon chest plate, along with the Inquisitor's armor. Uh, it does require 40 defense to equip this, and you can't buy it with gold. It's a reward from the Barbarian Assault minigame. Kind of a pain in the ass minigame if you've never done it. But you can be boosted through it. So it makes it not as miserable. The defense bonuses aren't that great. It's compared to like adamant and rune plate bodies. But you're wearing it more for the strength bonus. Now the Dragon Defender. It's arguably one of the, I don't know, I would say one of the best untradeables on this list in the game. It's used for its attack and strength bonuses. It's held in the shield slot, requires 60 defense to equip it, so it's the same as all dragon weaponry in the game. It can only be obtained from the stronger level 106 Cyclopses found in the Warrior Guild's basement. To enter the basement for the first time, you must show the Rune Defender, and then you can grant access to fight the 106 Cyclopses. You also need the Warrior Guild tokens, which are still required to enter this. And you have to get all the way from bronze to the rune defender in order to unlock access to gaining the dragon defender. The fire cape, everybody knows what the fire cape is. It's one of the best cape slots in the game besides the infernal cape, which none of you guys can get without buying it. So don't even try it. You'll get banned or you'll get the cape taken away. But yeah, the fire cape, it's a melee cape obtained as a reward from completing the Tazar fight cave. It's the second best melee cape in the game, so go get it. If you don't have it, there's tons of YouTube guides out there on how to get it. Ava's Accumulator is an item awarded to a player after completion of the quest Animal Magnetism, and you do need 50 range to put this on. It's worn in the cape slot, 
and it can pick up the player's ranged ammo after you shoot it and it also conserves the range ammo. Uh, this will also attract a random assortment of metal ammo. You can also toggle that to turn it off. It's pretty annoying. Uh, the accumulator does give the fourth best range attack bonus for the cape slot in the game. Void, which I do not have on my main, is a set of armor which can be purchased from the Void Knights with the points earned from pest control. It's a pretty fun but tedious minigame to do. It's pretty boring. Uh, in order to buy or equip any of the items, you must have 42 attack, strength, defense, HP, range, and magic, along with 22 prayer. Uh, the Void Knight armor contributes defensive bonuses to all stats equally without lowering any attack bonuses. So that's a huge plus to wearing it, but the thing's like freaking paper and you will get shredded. So wearing a complete set offers various combat bonuses, which make the armor a popular choice for players in the lower to mid levels and using multiple styles of attack. Because all you have to do is switch out the helmet from melee ranged or mage. The full set of armor uh, plus 850 points. The rune pouch is arguably one of the best untradeables in the game. It can store up to 16,000 of three different types of runes, and you can also upgrade it after completion of Tombs of a Masket. You do need the thread of Elin of Elidness, I think that's how you pronounce it, and 75 crafting. So you use that thread on the pouch, and it grants you an additional slot for a total of four rune slots. So that's huge when uh, inventory space is very limited when you're doing mage in the game and you need the inventory space for other switches or just extra food slots. Don't bring this into the wild. You will lose it. It can be purchased from the Slayer Master for 750 Slayer points or the Last Man Standing Shop for 75 points. Players can speak to the Magic Combat Tutor in Lumbridge to toggle an option which allows runes to be placed directly into the rune pouch upon picking them up or rune crafting so it's also a huge benefit for that as well provided there's already a stack of runes in that pouch with enough inventory space to hold them herb sack again this is great for if you're doing those herb runs or even slayer or just combat it's an item that can be purchased again from the slayer master for 750 points or you could do, what is it, the Tide Farm. I've never done that. It looks freaking god awful, so I'll never do that. Just do Slayer. It's much easier. It allows the player to store up to 30 of each grimy uh, herb for a total of 420. The Xerix Talisman is an amulet that can be charged using the Lizard Man Fangs, costing 16 coins per charge. Pretty cheap. This allows the player to teleport to various locations throughout Great Karen. Which is huge because that place is freaking massive and there's not a lot of teleports for it. It's an untradeable drop from killing lizard men, brutes, or shamans, and it can be attained from stealing from the stone chests in the lizard man temple beneath mulch. Uh, the drop rate for the monsters can be improved from 1 in 250 to 1 in 125 after completion of the easy diaries. So just bang that out. It's very easy and it's very quick. Uh, but the drop rate stays the same at 1 in 300 from the chests. And at level 72 construction, you can actually mount this to your portal nexus room within your POH, which I have mine there. So it's always very handy and easily accessible. Bone Crusher, which I got recently last year. It's a reward from the Hard Mauritania Diary. Wind charged with Ecto tokens and carried in your inventory, the player kills a monster that drops bones. The bone crusher will automatically crush them, giving you about half the XP you would have received if you had just buried the bones yourself. So this is great if you're hard AFK and you don't want to miss out on the prayer and you don't really care about picking up the bones and selling them. Uh, if you have the Mauritania heart, uh, what is it, Elite Diary completed? It will give you the full amount of XP for the bones, but I do not have that diary completed. Bones crushed within the Catacombs of Corinne will trigger the Catacombs Prayer Restoration Effect. The Ash Sanctifier is a reward from completing the hard uh, Corinne diary. When the players claim it from Tice near the Dark Altar, 
Uh, you can use it with death runes, and it gives you 10 charges per death rune. When charged and carried in your inventory again, the Ash Sanctifier will automatically purify Dinama, uh, what the demon ashes that are dropped from the demon creatures when they die. So it's the same as the Bone Crusher, granting you again half the prayer XP. Again, if you have the Elite Diary completed, it will give you the full XP. Holy Wrench, again, another prayer item. There's a lot of prayer items in this game. Is a reward from completing the Rum Deal quest. If players have this in their inventory, when you drink a prayer potion or super restore or anything that gives you prayer, you'll gain an additional one to two prayer. So that's huge. Um, when held in your player's inventory, the Holy Wrench increases the amount of prayer points restored when taking a dose. So an additional 2%, this will help you. Meaning each dose of the prayer potion will restore 27% of your prayer instead of 25. The crystal saw is an item made from a crystal seed by invoking the singing bowl in Brimstail's cave, which is located in the tree gnome stronghold. The seed is awarded to players after completion of Eyes of Glufry. When you do have the saw in your inventory, it allows your character to build furniture up to three levels higher than their current construction level. And last but not least, we have for number 17, the God Books. So you can acquire these after killing a Dagonoth mother in the Horror from the Deep quest. There are a total of six God Books held in the player's shield slot. Player must first receive a damage book and needs to add four pages to make it a completed god book. So you can acquire these pages through easy, medium, hard, elite, and master clues. Or you can just buy them from the Grand Exchange if you're not an Iron Man, which is so much easier. Uh, each book offers a variety of defensive and offensive bonuses. And each book also offers plus five prayer bonus, which is critical for conserving prayer points at such low levels. Mm -hmm.